Hey YouTube, it's been a little while since I did a video and thought I'd try to give it a couple ideas on maybe what to do with some cheaper items off of eBay and maybe use them for um, helping you work on your car. And um, if you have an oscilloscope, lab scope, maybe a graphene multimeter, um, you can use this at pressure test. A um, couple channels out there like Scanner Danner and stuff um, are showing a lot of things, but the tools they're using are you know, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, several thousand for the scope and stuff. So let me give you some alternatives. If you like it, put like at the end of the video. Maybe I'll try to make some more. Um, what I have here is a pressure sensor. Um, got this. It's the one I picked up is two hundred psi, which I figured would be enough to do in cylinder pressure tests on a car and work on things. But they do have several different ones if you just want to check like pressure vacuum on a manifold, items like that. Uh, you an idea what I have here is on eBay the one I have is just under $21 free shipping and comes with a cord on there three wire cords you got to provide power to it the thing that's going to vary with these on eBay that you got to kind of look at and after building this there's probably better alternatives but the one I don't know if you can see this or not it's needs five volts so you got to supply with 5 volts voltage. The output, it starts at half a volt, so it has an offset of half a volt and it goes to 4.5 volts. So it has a 4 volt, four volt working range um, for the 200 PSI. It um, doesn't use much power though, so you could probably use a 9 volt battery, knock it down to 5 volts or something and run for quite a while for you. Anyways, set that aside. What I chose to power it with, so this like $21, $22 free shipping. What I've got here is a 12 volt to 5 volt um, converter, 3 amps, which is way more than you need for this. And um, it's common ground, so we can use the ground and it'll go through the whole thing. Um, this is on eBay, it's six, seven dollars. They have all kinds of these. Some of them just go to USB um, ports. You can just cut the USB port off or something. But I use this as a power source, and I found that it works pretty much anywhere from about eight and a half, nine volts all the way up to fifteen volts, and it maintains a very um, safe five volts. So it should work very well for the sensor. And the sensor seems to be fairly not so sensitive to the voltage. The other piece, because I wanted this to go to my oscilloscope, is I have B, where it's got the BNC cable and it just goes to help test circuit. I got one of these at Fry's. It was like five, six dollars. You can get like two of them for probably less than ten bucks on eBay. Um, pick these up, but what we're going to do is we're just going to cut off this end, leave it fairly long so I got, you know, about a foot and a half, two feet to work with. Um, to move my sensor around and this is what we're going to attach to the power the power voltage and then connect it to the cable that came with the sensor this uh, this this cable came with the sensor and it plugs in and it has the three wires so you're going to have power ground and the signal wire coming out of here and what I ended up with if I can get far enough back or not. Here's the sensor. Connector it came on. I just put some so it's not pulling on the wires. Some electrical tape on here to fasten this together. And I connected from Harbor Freight, where Home Depot, wherever you get it, this is a regular quarter inch connector to go into um, same as hooks up to your air compressor, but that's what fit my um, pressure gauge. So that pressure gauge, the pieces I have will plug right into that. This is the wire that came with it. This is that 12 volt to uh, 5 volt um, power supply. And I just wired everything together and taped it up. And I got an old extension cord here and uh, connected to the battery. Just hooked it a couple of playables. Um, I don't see anything where it says this has reverse polarity protection in it. So I labeled these so you know which one's power, which one's ground. When you hook it up, but this will connect right to your car battery under the hood. Hook this up to your um, oscilloscope, um, pressure sorry pressure gauge, um, 
that you're putting in the cylinder, whatever you're testing the pressure of, and this will hook right up to your oscilloscope, scope meter, whatever you happen to be using. So what I'm going to do is move over. I'm going to don't want to disassemble the car, so I'm going to use the lawnmower just to give you a quick example of how this works out for you. All right. Just give me an idea, and then we'll look at these numbers later. I just got my pressure gauge hooked up on here right now, and just run this real quick. And we'll compare this later to what we're getting with the other, but right now we have eh, right around 70 pounds, 71 pounds in here, compression. So taking the gauge we set up, this will go to the pressure gauge. I just need power. I got a 12 volt battery here. Hook that up real quick. Then let me get the oscilloscope. All right. I just have this set up right now. I have two channels set up because I also have a spark test in here. I want to show you that you can use this in conjunction with some other items that if you want to see, check on timing and how sparks coming up. So the channel that's set up with the um, pressure gauge, I got 500 millivolts per division with the scale that I'm using. Realize that the first half volt is where it's going to set at, so it's going to use the next couple uh, places after that. And the second one, I just have it 200 millivolts for division. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. Yeah. All right, we have a reading. Let's go to the bench and see what we have. All right, here's looking at the scope. You can see this. Get rid of some of this light here. All right, the yellow trace is the pressure sensor, and it does show some vacuum. You can, it goes down that half volt; it'll drop. So, whatever that comes out to be, probably about. 20 pounds or something to go in vacuum. But taking a reading from the half volt up to the top of the first peak on here, and realize it's lawnmower, so depending how hard I pull or something, but you get 1.4 volts. So the way this is going to work out, if you can read this, I got 200 psi for 4 volts is what this scale is on this um, sensor I have. So every 50 psi for 1 volt, or for every 100 millivolts, it's 5 psi. So this using the 1.4 times 5 divided by 0.1 which is just the average of this and the question mark is what we're reading here on the scope. You're going to get 70 psi which is pretty on with, with the gauges I had. I think I had 70, 71 psi on that gauge looking at the gauge. Now the second one looks like I pulled it a little bit harder here and if we read that, about 1.68, 1 1.7 in there. So if we take that 1.68 1, 1 times 5 and divide that by 0.1, we'll get 84 pounds on that one. So. I want to guess it's pretty it's pretty accurate. It's probably as accurate as that cheap gauge I have there from Harbor Freight. But one thing I just wanted to show on here is I have a sensor that shows the um, spark. And now the lawnmower looks like it sparks every revolution. So you got one where there's no compression on there. But here's the first first one, and you can see it's pretty much right before um, maximum compression on there, top dead center, I guess, on that cylinder. And in this one, it didn't jump quite as high, but you can see where it lines up. 
So if you put this on your car, where the cranking should be pretty um, even by the starter, you could should be a pretty accurate compression rating with this and using the um, some sort of sensor taking the voltage off of the um, coil unplugs or if you've got an older ignition system where you do an inductive pickup on the coil like I'm using on the lawnmower here, you should be able to get a pretty good idea where you're falling as far as your spark with your um, top dead center of the cylinder with the compression. But just wanted to throw that out there. Tell, tell me what you guys think. Maybe I'll try to come up with some other things, but there's some cheap parts off of eBay and I think you can get a pretty good working pressure sensor here that you can use with your scope, lab scope. Maybe it's got a, um, like this, a cheap graphing calculator um, and take it out to your car and help you work on your car and it's a lot cheaper than seven, eight hundred dollars for some of the other tools out there. Alright YouTube, you have a good day.